Well, hello and welcome to Ivory Blush Roses. My name is Lisa, and today we're going on another of our stitching rambles. We're going to get started on the Autumn Bell Pull today. The goal is to get this project completed before the end of November so I can move on to a special Christmas project during December. I'm so excited to get going on this new project and get this one finished. This was a set of Do Your Own Blocks or DYB Blocks from a round robin that I participated in back in 2010 and 11, a long time ago. So we're talking 12 and 13 years ago. That's a long time. <laughs> I've had some time to do some brainstorming and I can't wait to show you what we're going to be doing. On the table here I've laid out the blocks in roughly the order they're going to go. Now I do have one block that I need to embroider and that will be done as part of this. But I think before I get started on that part, what I'm going to be doing is making some corrections on a couple of elements on these current blocks that I'm not so happy with. I really love the blocks and they work out so that there's three sort of scenic blocks and two sort of floral or kind of nature foliage inspired blocks. So I'm going to be working on a foliage inspired block for mine. But I want to make changes in particular to two blocks. I have this block. I love the tree and the vines and the fence and the little birds and I don't mind the pumpkin but the little dog it doesn't do anything for me. I don't think it takes away from the block to remove it. So I'm going to be removing that. So that will be step number one. And then on this block, this is one of the other ones with a tree, this element feels very out of place to me. And no matter how I've looked at it and arranged the blocks, I can't make it work. So this gold flower is going to get removed. The other thing I find a little jarring is this tiny bit of embroidery. Now I like the size and shape of it. I'm not so fond of the color. The purple and pink just doesn't quite go. The colors are a little too bright. So this block here has some dusty pink in it and I'm thinking I may switch this and do that in a similar tone to this. So I'll remove this. Once I do, we're going to take another look at these tatted elements. There's two leaves in here, I believe, and two circles. And I may rearrange those and I may actually move some of that to the block that I do. And that's the current plan. It's not a huge number of changes, but there are some to make. So that's going to be what we're going to start with today. Now that we've taken a quick look at all of those blocks, let me put these back in a stack here and we'll take a look at them. I have labeled my blocks so I don't forget the order. Once I decided which order I wanted them in, I went through and wrote which one is the top block and which is the bottom and then numbered them going down. The blocks are also all labeled with the person who stitched the blocks and I really love having that and when I'm all finished with the project I will make a label to go on the back that has that in it. So let me set that aside and now let's look at my supplies. I spent quite a bit of time going through and looking for threads that match the projects. And this is the assortment that I've come up with. I've also added a couple of others, but you'll see they all fit within this tone. And I've matched threads accordingly as best I could. So those are threads I'm going to be using to stitch my own block. And I even was able to find threads that while not identical to some of these beautiful variegated, there's close enough that they keep the same feel for that. And this block has a little bit of burgundy in it. This rose, I didn't mind this. It fit with the block where this one just seemed sort of plunked on top. So let me show you what I have gathered for this whole series of things. I'll keep the blocks here so you can see them. I have my pearl cotton in this little basket in here. So I have everything from a white and off-white beige into these lovely soft greens and into some darker greens and then some burgundy kind of rust, peachy orange 
and gold. And then this has got a couple of pearl cottons in it as well that I have on spools, but mostly stranded embroidery floss. And this particular one, which is used quite a bit on one of the blocks, I didn't have very much on the bobbin, so I have an extra skein there. I also have a few of these little mother of pearl birds and since they're used on one of the blocks I thought I could use that to carry through on a couple of them. Let's find that block. So this block has those little mother of pearl birds and I really like those and I actually thought that when I take this off the block might need some more so I might put a bird or two up in the tree to kind of go with the cat. So we'll do that. This block also has these lovely little metal leaves. And while I don't have any that are exact, I do have these. And I thought those could go. Um, that is something I could add as well. And so when I take this block and remove this, I'm gonna need something down here. So I'm thinking scattering some embroidered leaves and maybe a few of these down in the bottom to pull it through. So it'll give the similar feel and idea for that. So that is what I have gathered. I've got some, some other threads that I thought were the right colors. This block doesn't have much beading on it, but I do have these items that will need stitched down, so I do have my beading thread. And then the other thing I have, set that out of the way, is when we do these round robin blocks, I always made a booklet to go with. And so in that booklet, I gave a little bit of information. And in here, I told what I wanted with the block. I'll just read it to you. It says, thank you so much for working on my blocks. I love autumn and would like to make a seasonal bell pull out of these blocks. My home is mostly white cream and a crew or natural linen in color with touches of green. I'd like to keep the bell pull in pale neutrals and a crew to go with my decor. Touches of old gold are okay too. I'm not fond of silkies or anything plastic, so please avoid those. I do love leaves, vines, and natural things. I really look forward to working on everyone's blocks. Have fun and thank you again. And then I wrote just a little list of things I love about autumn. I love leaves, vines, pumpkins, wind, sunflowers, asters, clouds, corn stalks, harvested fields, acorns, trees with and without leaves, sunshine, migrating birds, raking leaves, burning leaf piles, faded roses, baskets, apples, harvest, barns, and haystacks. And so that's very much what I got back on these blocks. And then everybody wrote back a lovely little note about what they had done on their block and working on it. So I really enjoyed that. And I did challenge everybody with this block. And the other thing I put in here was the name of the round robin and who mailed to whom. And then we had the addresses in here as well. So the other thing I will do on my bell pull, I usually keep these in a folder in my office. And I actually think I'm going to put a pocket and stick the booklet in the pocket on the back of the bell pull. So with that, let's get going. So there's really only two blocks that I need to work on. This one is going to be easy to start with as I believe it's just stitched on. I think it might be stitched on with this leaf here to cover it. So we may be cutting through a couple of stitches. I'm just working pretty hard to just trim the stitching. There's that, yeah. So that leaf needs to be restitched down. It's a cute little dog, but it, like I said, for me, it just didn't go. And I like the block much better without that element on. So we'll take that off. Let's go ahead and just redo that right off the bat. So here's my beading thread left over from the last project. There's that. I think we just need one stitch there. 
So that was an easy fix. All right. So one change done. Yeah, I like that so much better. Now I may see about bringing that vine along underneath here and just giving it a little more balance on the bottom. We'll see. Let's switch our attention to this one. This has got to go. Uh, it's the only element in all of the blocks that I looked at immediately when I got it and went, nope, that has to come off. I love the tatted pieces, but I need to see how to make them work into the whole thing a little bit better. So the stitching is exquisite. There's beautiful leaves. I love the tree. I love the cat sitting in the tree. I do think we need to put a bird or two in that tree for the cat to be looking at. But this has got to go. It just doesn't fit with the rest of the block. So, once again, I'm looking and just trying to see where that is stitched on. And that's coming off pretty easily. I always asked for no glue on my projects and I'm really glad that even though I didn't ask on this one, this is not glued down. That helps a great deal. So it's got a couple of beads and stuff with it and I may see if I can reuse those. So there's that gold trim. There's another bead in there. So that's an element she made and on it, something else it might have gone beautifully but for me it just didn't work. And a lot of people say well why are you removing somebody else's work and the reality is I have to live with this piece. It's living in my home and I don't feel that keeping something that I don't like is necessary. Now I have had other blocks in the past where I've left elements that I wasn't particularly fond of and I find I never put those items out. So if I'm going to do this it's better to go ahead and make the changes for me and do that. These are actually really interesting little things so I don't know that I'm going to use them because there's really not much in the way of beads on this block. But I think the block is better already. I actually really love these tatted pieces, but I don't like where they're located. So I think I'm going to go ahead and remove those, and I'm going to remove this stitching, but I also want to make sure I draw a line. I think when I take it out, the stitching lines will show, and so that'll be the very first thing I restitch on there, I think. But I'll stitch it in a color way that I'm a little happier with. It's going to be near this block. I think this is the one, yeah, this is the one that sits above this block. So even if I transfer something similar up, that would help. But I think these, even if they were just oriented a different way, will help. So this one I might do from the back here. And I do have pictures of these blocks that I've taken a long time ago. So I have them all for reference, so I can see what's been done. I'm trying not to cut the backing fabric. Yeah, there, those just popped right off. They're beautiful little tatted pieces, and my guess is that Ritva tatted those herself. She's a beautiful needle artist. I think I'd like to turn this one around. So I just need to figure out what thread that is stitched on with. There we go. That one out and then that's long enough. Hopefully I can knot that right here with one of these other longer threads. All right, let's see here. I think that's going to be a simple change but it makes it look more like it's sitting at the base of the tree. I wonder, these two tatted pieces are two slightly different colors. I like that, so let me pin that down a little bit. 
What do you think? And then actually, I'm wondering about this. So this is definitely sort of windy. This is the one going below it. Of course, it's actually going to be like this. So I might even bring up some thread here and bring that up. And then my block will sit on top of that. I'm going to leave this for right now. I think what I'm going to do is stitch this down. I've got a whole bunch of these little birds. So if I'm looking at this one, something like that maybe. I think it needs the smaller ones. I think it would probably be better for them to look like they're watching the cat. You know, I don't know if I like those on there. I thought, you know, I get this stuff out and I try and we see and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. I'm not saying no to them just yet. I'm just not sure. I don't think I want any in the tree. Yeah, I don't know about those. We'll leave those for now. I think we've made our choice for birds. I'm leaving another one out here, thinking I might add it. It might be nice to have something down here, because this corner is a little open and empty. So I might add a little shrubbery down here that the bird perches in. So we'll think about that one here shortly. All right, well, that bird, those birds are easy to stitch down, and I think I have... This is an off-white beading thread. I think it's better for those birds. And looking at it, I'm not sure I like that one after all. Gotta find one that looks good from that side that's not too big. What about this one? All these are handmade somewhere. So every one is unique and different. I liked the whiter color though. Decisions, decisions. Let's do that one. I like that. And two. So we're going to go right up here. So these I'm going to take a couple of stitches in. Oh, turned them the wrong way. So otherwise it won't sit. And this is one of those, we talked about stitching on bigger beads at one point. And so this one I'm going to make that same X, trying to get it to sit fairly flat and position it where I want it. On these really big ones, I really like to take extra stitches. I'm going to do a third stitch through. And again, I'm doing two knots. Just my preferred method when I'm stitching on any kind of bead or button. I like them to be nice and secure. I remember when I first started crazy quilting, I stitched all my beads on with a single strand of beading thread. And then I discovered, well, I remember one particular crazy quilter who always said, you need to use two strands because the thread stretches. And I didn't believe her. And then the cream and white crazy quilt that's on the wall in the background here was the first one I stitched. And I stitched one section that's got lots and lots of beads on it. And you know what? She was right because those have all stitched and loosened up with time. And that's why I use the doubled thread now. Quinn, they were sending something on exhibition and she would always restitch all the beads down because she was afraid they were going to come off. And I thought, oh, well, that is just such a waste of time. But now I understand why she did it. I thought she was very particular at the time and losing my needle there and my squeaky table again. I still haven't figured that out. I think it's the metal piece that makes the drop leaf come up. So maybe it just needs oiled or we shall see. All right, so there's those little birds. And so that coordinates nice. And so now I just need to stitch these down. And you know, I actually am thinking 
This thread blends right in with the piece of Onisberg cotton that's here in the back. And I'm thinking one strand of that would do a great job. So I can use that piece. Again, I'm using that beige here. I'm going to have a sip of tea before it gets too cold. Are you a tea or a coffee drinker? I love tea. It's my go-to. Coffee upsets my stomach. But I love a good black tea. And my favorite these days is a spiced chai from Trader Joe's. So I'm really liking that one. So I'm going to remove this leaf for now and stitch this down here. And it looks like she just took one tack in the end of each of those little picots. So we'll start with that. If I can see them. That's why I have some sewing glasses. Put them on, Lisa. Let's try that again. Oh my gosh, I still can't see it. There we go. All right, well, this is not super exciting stitching today, but I'm really glad to be getting going on this project and making these changes that I've been thinking about for so many years. I think it's going to just make this a much happier piece for me. This is going very quickly. So I think today we're just going to finish these two blocks, get them up to speed. I'm going to then think about what I want to do on the block that I'm going to stitch. Then next time we'll get started on that. So I'm stitching a couple of these inner ones down. Just I want it to be secure all the way around. All right, so now that's not going to go anywhere. Now let's bring that leaf back in. Which way are we going? This way? We're bringing it up. I think I like it that way better. And I'm a little concerned about that edge because it's when I don't want it to get caught in the seam when I put the blocks together. Remember, we're putting these together like so. I think when I put it there, I like it better that way. So I think I'm not going to tack the bottom edge. I'm going to pin it up and then it's just going to hang over that edge. So I'm going to go back and pin that again. I want to hold it in place. Now, I'm, I'm st I haven't knotted off or anything here, so I know I'm right in this area, so I'm going to just go ahead and stitch this inside edge down. I think one of these threads, there we go. Again, we're just using a single strand. And I think I finally figured out the lighting in here. But I think it helps not to be doing something that's all those orange and yellow, yellowy gold colors that sort of sucked up the light. So since I'm not going to stitch that lower edge, I am going to stitch kind of along the center here and make sure it's nice and secure. And that is going to just about finish off this thread, so I'll get a new thread to stitch the other leaf down. And by matching the thread to that background fabric, you just don't even see it here once it's stitched, so that really helps. So here I'm stitching at a junction, and that will also help hide it. And I'll get this outer peak. Whoops, I'm losing my needle. All right, so let's tie that off at that end. And since that's not a heavy element that's going to really pull, and that thread is too short for me to really use here on the next one. So we can take that pin out, but I am going to pin up that edge so that when I sew them together, it will be out of the way. So now we just need to tack that down. There's my needle. So we've had our first couple of really frosty nights here. So fall is definitely here. I put the heavy comforter on the bed, made for a very cozy night's sleep. I haven't turned the furnace on yet. And the house has been staying in the 60s, which is fine. I'm happy with that. During the day, I can wear an extra sweater, or in this room, in my office, I have a little space heater that I use sometimes. I need a little extra warmth. But I also notice how short those days are getting. And I think we're getting close to our change to standard time, so the daylight savings time will end. I think for me, that's the hardest part of the year, is those longer dark days. I think it's that way for a lot of people. Okay, so I'm going to remove that little pin. I think I am going to come up the middle of this one just for some added security. I don't think it needs a lot of stitches. I think it'll help keep it from flopping around a little bit. Well, let's just take that pin out. It's just in my way right now. I 
All right, well, gosh, here I've been dreading this for years, which is probably why I've put it off for so long. And in less than half an hour, we have fixed both blocks. I'm so much happier with that. So the thing I'm still not real happy with is this. And I'm just, I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do there yet. I think that ends today's stitching session. Let me know what you think I should do. Should I add the metal leaves to this block? Or should I leave it as is and just change this spray of embroidery? Let me know what you think on that. And if you think the other tree needs anything else on it. I do feel like it's a little bare at the bottom, but, but that's okay. All of these blocks have quite a bit of space on them. I, I think it could go either way, but I'm much happier with the change on this. I think in the long run, it's gonna make a big difference. I'm glad to finally get going on this project. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you've enjoyed following along as we make some changes on these autumn bell pull blocks. I really appreciate each and every one of you. and I'm so thankful that you've been here with me today. Have a beautiful day and I'll see you in the next video.